ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to a, I guess, special edition of Maroon and Bold. I'm your host and sports editor, Austin Chastain, along in the Zoom call with Christian Boer. Uh, quick episode tonight, the bracket for the NCAA Women's Tournament just dropped. Central Michigan is the number 12 seed in the Riverwalk region, where the Chippewas will play fifth seed Iowa going to jump right into it again quick episode here tonight but christian of course i want to ask before we get to the madness how are you doing i'm doing all right brother what about yourself i cannot complain um we've had a great week um it's just every oh my god things are going so great I, i can't i can't describe it it's awesome what we can describe, what we can talk about, what we will talk about, we're going to do it. Central Michigan women's basketball winning the Mid-American Conference tournament against Bowling Green. Five-point win, big-time win. You know, I had to come from behind. Bowling Green came from behind. Back-and-forth battle in Cleveland. Chippewas win it as the number two seed in Cleveland. Move on, and we'll go play Iowa in the NCAA tournament. The actual location of the game itself we do not know quite yet that i think will be determined either later on monday or first thing on tuesday um but lots of great stuff with with cmu um christian christian just told me right before right before we we hit record here that he feels like the most informed man on the planet the bracket dropped what? Probably matchup dropped probably 20, 30 minutes ago. And Christian has already done his research. He, he was firing away on Twitter. Okay. Follow him at Seaboer underscore. He was firing away. But Christian, go ahead and tell the people what you found out about the Hawkeyes. Yeah. So this matchup is the first one of the tournament. It's going to be the first game played on Sunday, March 21st. It's going to be the opener. Uh, and Iowa comes into this game. Uh, it really, it's a tale of uh, two sides of the court because offensively, uh, they rank up there with the best of them in terms of point per possession, which is basically a metric. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it just basically measures offensive efficiency. They're averaging over a point per possession. That ranks in the 100th percentile. That's among the best in the country. However, you flip the script and look at their defense, and they're totally on the opposite side, they allow almost a point per possession, uh, which ranks in the first percentile, uh, which is not good. So there's certainly an avenue to where Central Michigan can win this game um, in terms of they're just going to have to play well offensively and they get some stops because this Iowa offense is very, very good. They're led by uh, Caitlin Clark, who, you know, we just talked with Heather Osterley. She says that Clark should be in the conversation with Nash as the national freshman of the year, probably not going to win it uh, because of UConn's Paige Beckers, but Clark's up there. She was a five-star freshman out of high school and she's averaging about 27 points per game. So standing six foot tall as well. So she's going to be a, a you know, she's going to be a problem matchup wise for the Chippewas who don't really have, they don't have big guards and the chips are only playing with eight players. So I guess the avenue to which Central Michigan can win this game would have to be, you know, they're only playing with eight. You got to stay out of foul trouble and then you got to get stops on the defensive end, which um, I believe they're playing their best basketball right now. But Iowa certainly has a plethora of options and ways to beat teams. So Central's in for it. Uh, but at the same time, they've got experience. And, you know, March is all, they say March is all about experienced guards, and Central Michigan has plenty of that. That's exactly it. And and really thinking about that, man. I mean, if you look at Central's guards, okay, we're gonna we're gonna just quick go to Central's guards. Michaela Kelly is really the the catalyst of the team. Let's be let's be frank here. Um, she's played in now uh, four NCAA tournament games with the the run of the Sweet Sixteen in 2018, and then the the one um, against Michigan State in 2019. Obviously, and. I, Technically speaking, Central Michigan made the NCAA tournament last year, but with the tournament canceled due to the pandemic, obviously, obviously no one played, but that I, I guess you could say it's four in a row for CMU, but I digress. Um, 
but the other piece with that, like we said, guards is going guards guards is guards are going to be the most important piece of this entire run. And Michaela Kelly, Molly Davis continuing to play well as they have all year outside of maybe one game, but continuing to play well for those two is going to be huge. Granted, two players aren't going to make or break a team. We know that it's a five, it's a five, five woman team, technically eight total. Okay. But yes, yeah, staying out of foul trouble is going to be huge. We saw that a little bit um, in Cleveland where sometimes CMU got itself into foul trouble. And in fact, in that uh, se- semifinal against Ohio, Chippewa's only played with seven, really, because Kira Bustle was not able to play. I think she started maybe just played just a handful of minutes. But then Anika Weeks stepped in and filled that role nicely. And then come championship Saturday, Bustle was back. Weeks and Bustle kind of traded off throughout the day. And that helped. And that obviously led to a triple victory. Now, going, this will be the third time CMU plays against a Big Ten team. The first one was a close game. Michigan ran away. The second one was a brutally close game in December. Christian and I were in the Breslin Center for that one against Michigan State. That one felt like March from the jump. Now you're going to play against Iowa a Big Ten team that had some success, maybe not as much success as that would have wanted, um, as Christian kind of ran through some of the stats. Is is there an actual conversation that we can have? Do you think, Christian, that CMU, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, oh, CMU doesn't stand a chance, but is there a conversation that we can have about CMU making its way, beating Iowa, and somehow getting the second round, maybe even the second weekend? Certainly. I think it starts, uh, you know, you know, you, you know what you're going to get out of Kelly and Davis, but you've got to get the role players to step up. I think if Central Michigan is going to win this game, it's going to be because Jahari Smith has 19 and 10 or Kira Bustle has 19 and 10. We haven't seen – and, you know, Kira Bustle's been going through some things injury-wise. We haven't seen her have a good game uh, since relatively early in the season, and I think she's way past due. I think she knows that. I think her teammates know that. I think uh, Heather Osterley knows that. And I would not be surprised if she comes out against Iowa. Uh, you know what their game plan is going to be defensively for the Hawkeyes. It's going to be to give up the pick and pop, hedge the screens, and not let Kelly or Davis get to the middle of the floor because that's when they're at their most effective. So for Central Michigan to win, they're going to have to play off that. Um, you know, you're going to have to see Kara Bustle slip in screens, pick and pop and hitting threes. Um, you're going to have to see Jakari Smith rotating the spots on the block. And then Maddie Waters is going to have to be dynamite, which in the MAC tournament she was. So certainly there's an avenue for Central Michigan to win this game. I personally think it's a good draw. Um, you know, for a team that finished second in their conference to get a 12 seed, I think is relatively impressive considering – you know, a lot of the um, mid-major squads just don't get the love they deserve, but I think the committee knows how good this team can be when they're rolling. Um, also wouldn't be surprised to see, like, a Sophia Karasinski have a big game behind the arc. Um, Callie Martinez all of a sudden is a knockdown shooter. She had a couple of good games in the tournament. Um, there's just, you know, all eight of these players are going to contribute in some capacity, and if, you know, they all play well, then Central Michigan could go on another run. I think that um, – at its best, this team's real deep and uh, can be and can play with anybody, can beat with anybody. And I think they showed that in that game at the Breslin Center uh, before the wheels fell off in the last four minutes or so. So certainly, there's a, a way for them to win this game and, and advance into the second round and maybe even the second weekend, like you said. Yeah, I mean, on it. Let, let's be completely honest here. There were times this year where CMU looked like it was the furthest thing from a tournament team. Let's be be completely honest. But then there were other times, especially at the end of the season, when Heather when Heather, Heather Osterley really wanted CMU to be playing well, really wanted her team to be playing well. Uh, Heather, if you're listening, I apologize for somehow stuttering your name. Apologize for that. I, we're good. Um, but 
like I said, there were times where CMU really, really struggled in all facets of the game. But I think I think the Chippewas needed that, needed that struggle, so then they could come back and learn from that struggle so then they could utilize what they learned to be playing their best basketball in March, which certainly, which certainly. They, I agree they, with that. Yeah, which they could be doing right now. I mean, yeah, they only have eight players, but they might be playing their best basketball right now. Yeah. And I want to kind of interject to the point here. Yes. Uh, it's the, it's the total opposite of last season. You know, last season they go on that, whatever it was, 15, 16 game win streak to start conference play and then you see the wheels fall off they lose what three out of four and get knocked out in the first round of the tournament now this year uh they took their lumps early there you know you're losing close games at home you're going to niu and getting pounded like now they've got it figured out the experience is playing you know with experience you know you're seeing um maddie waters get to open spots on the floor you're seeing jahari smith rotating um just really, really good basketball. This is a team that plays like it's led by underclass or upperclassmen. Excuse me. Now, um, you know, last year they they started out hot and then kind of got hit with the adversity. And I feel like you know, while their experience, they knew what to do. It was just a matter of they couldn't really figure it out when they needed to figure it out towards the end of last year. Uh, but now I think the wheels are back on, and this team could be a wagon if um, they all start clicking, and they have been for a while. So, you know, you saw them get up by double digits early, you know, in that third quarter against Bowling Green with eight players, and you could say three of them weren't playing very well. Uh, that's just the Michaela Kelly, Molly Davis effect. So um, if you can get all eight of these players clicking, uh, this Chippewa team can play with anybody, and I will, I'll die on that hill. He said a wagon. <laughs> Man, every time you say that, it makes me laugh. I'm not going to lie. This kid might be one of the funniest people I've ever met with some of the stuff that he says. That's that Midwest vernacular, brother. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love it. Oh, man. All right. Oh, man. I'm hitting stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Is it, okay. I think I think for the, the fact that I'm hitting stuff and I'm I don't know what I'm doing right now, um, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap this thing up, Christian? No, sir. I'd just like to say, you know, as a 19-year-old kid covering the NCAA tournament, personally, this is this is awesome. Like, this is what I feel like uh, is it's it's been super good. You know, with everything we went through this year to be able to do that, uh, to be able to cover this tournament is is awesome. Yes, and CM Life will be in San Antonio. We will. Um, be bringing you coverage down there so for uh for christian our podcast editor ben ackley i am austin chastain make sure you follow all of our social media channels cmlife.com cmlife sports on twitter find us all find us all over the place you can find us appreciate you listening or watching here on youtube or li like i said listening wherever you find your podcasts so for that we will talk to you again when we meet again.